Savannah State University campus. Year 1998. It's sunny on the SSU campus as the college students walk to and from their daytime classes. Cars drive by playing mashups of DMX Get It Me Dog, Outcast Rosa Parks, and Juvenile Back That As Up. Student Center. Three college students in their late teens sit at one of the tables in the cafeteria. T. Lee and Arthur sit back in amazement as Shad, the internet cutter, tells them one of his entertaining but misogynistic stories. Shad coined the term internet cutter from the Atlanta slang, popular among Atlanta rappers in the 90s. Shad's known for meeting women online and having an abundance of sex with them. His friends acknowledge him as the internet cutter. So yo, I'm giving straight back shots, right? Shad begins to demonstrate his experience by humping the air while explaining his experience with his friends. If my dumbass throws the condom wrapper in the air out of shock. T. Lee and Arthur look at each other with shock. Damn, he started hitting without the condom. T. Lee mentions to Arthur. Chill, chill, chill. So now we're scrambling. I'm trying to find the rubber. Shorty then rushes me to her room. While sitting back down at the table. So I can't hide in the chick's closet because it's filled with shoe racks. Her bed is on the floor, Asian style. So I can't even hide under her bed. Boy, you're fucked! Arthur yells out with excitement. Shad gives Arthur the... You bet ya, nod. So anyway, her father walks into her room with the rubber packet. Shad closes his eyes. I'm laying on her bed with my eyes closed like, please don't let him see me. Please don't let him see me. T. Lee and Arthur begin to laugh. So her father looks at me and he's like, excuse me, young man, you need to leave. So I quickly get up and leave out of the room and her mother is in the next room. Oh, wow. The same mother that tried to fight you when you brought her daughter home late the other time? T. Lee asks with laughter. Shad looks down in embarrassment. Yeah, the kickboxing mom. Both T. Lee and Arthur laugh. So what happened when the mother saw you in her house a week after she threatened you and made you fake cry? Arthur asks. The fellas break out into laughter. Anyway, so I walked by her mother's bedroom door with my head down and she said, Man, sit there, sit down. Says a young college student by the name of, let's say, Cisco. Very arrogant, blonde-haired, teenage young man. Shad's caught off guard as he looks toward his rival Cisco with disgust. Those girls you pull on the net is average their best. And your game is lame like Matumbo and the Denver Nuggets. Cisco snaps. Shad rolls his eyes and turns away from Cisco. I'm like the bulls, baby. Cisco proudly comments. I see why you for the bulls. Because you're definitely on the BS right now. Chad snaps back. Cisco smirks. Listen, I've cut more prettier women than you. I bet you don't know how to collect the correct information to link up with a pretty chick that doesn't have an online pick. I ain't new to this. I'll give you some free game. Cisco retorts. If they don't have a pick, more than likely they don't own a picture scanner. Ask questions. Read up questions like, what's their age and height? Shad looks at Cisco with a condescending look. Really? That's pretty obvious. You definitely have to get her to give a physical description of herself. Most descriptions is in her screen name. Like if her name has some type of food in it. She's probably a big girl. Cisco looks away from Shad, nodding in agreement. That must sound familiar to you. What about getting around asking about her weight and not offending her? What if she's ugly? How do you get a visual description, huh? Shad looks proud at Cisco as if he has him on the ropes. Their friends continue to look interested in the interaction. If you don't know, I'll tell you. Shad smirks at Cisco. Cisco looks up at Shad with a shit-eating grin and calmly replies, You ask her dress size, or if you're more patient and tuned in like me, I'll ask what her hobbies are and if she's into working out. I mean, big women might be a thing. Shad looks at Cisco with a shocked expression. T. Lee folds his arms in a defensive posture. Come on, man, I fucks with the BBWs. T. Lee replies. That's fine, but is she a cute BBW? What if her gut sticks out more than her ass? Cisco asks. 
Arthur looks around at the other passing students in embarrassment who may happen to hear the conversation. Asking a woman's dress size is wild. T. Lee says. Well, I'll just find out if they are foodie or not. Shad replies. A what? Arthur asks. It's people that love to eat. It's not a clear-cut way to find out the weight, but you have to compile the information. Shad answers. Arthur nods with understanding. Is there a clear and cut way to find out if they're attractive? Cisco smirks at Shad. Well, what worked for me, young Patty, was simple. I ask her who do people say she favor, and then ask her what's her best features, personality, and physically. After replying, Cisco confidently walks toward Shad face to face. Shad takes a step back. I know my stuff. I know more than you, my friend. Cisco says. Sure. Shad replies. Well, if you think you're the internet cousin, why not make a wager with me? Cisco says with a smug tone. All right, what's the challenge? Shad asks inquisitively. All right. Whoever meets a fine shorty online and cuts, they hold the title of the internet cut. Cisco replies. Yeah, bet that up. Shad agrees. Both students shake hands. Cisco continues to hold Shad's hand. Oh, by the way, I already have a date tonight, and she passed the test. <laughs> Cisco mentions. Shad clinches Cisco's handshake. Cisco smiles even harder. She's light brown and has long hair. She hits the gym about twice a week. And the person she says people say she favors the most is... Cisco leans over and whispers into Shad's ear to finish. Shad's eyes grow big with desperation. You know what? Don't even sweat. I'll send you a picture of Shorty slobbing on the knob like corn on the cob. I might even videotape it. <laughs> the rest of the friends laugh except Shad. Cisco releases his handshake with a larger grin. This bet should be non-void. Clearly, Cisco had this in motion before the bet. T. Lee remarks. Shad quickly responds with, It doesn't matter. It would be that much iller to catch up and pass you when I bring a dime back to the dorm. Shad looks around at his friends. Well, since Cisco had to give himself a head start and try to claim my title, I'll go ahead and hit the library's internet and get to messaging. Shad daps up all of his friends and leaves the student center. Shad walks out looking frustrated. Library, later. Shad is shown online going in group chats and conversing with different women. He studies the conversations with precision and confidence. Shad's face lights up with curiosity and delight. Savannah State University campus, day. Shad meets up with his friend T. Lee standing outside the student center. Sup, T. Lee? Shad says. What's going on, man? Where's everyone else? Shad asks. Arthur is studying for a test and Cisco hasn't shown up for any of his classes today. T. Lee mentions. Shad looks at T. Lee confused. What do you mean Cisco hasn't shown up for classes today? Shad asks. T. Lee pats Shad on his back. I'm sorry to say, Shad, Cisco may have gone on that date and got his balls drained. T. Lee mentions regretfully. On Shad's face is the look of defeat. It has happened before and to not report back right away. She may be a dime. Shad looks down. You're right, man. Damn. Shad says disappointingly. Hey, don't sweat it, man. You were the first to inherit the title of Internet Cutter. I'm sure there will be other opportunities to get the title back. I do have a date tonight. Hey, I'll give you the scoop on that later. Shad confidently mentions. Shad daps T. Lee and walks away. All right, man. You still might have some time to reel in a dime before the deadline. T. Lee says to himself as Shad walks away. Car. Night. Shad pulls up at a dark cul-de-sac with a creepy, older-looking house on the corner. The streetlight flashes off and on with a buzzing sound in the quiet night. Shad looks down at his MapQuest paper to make sure he's in the right location. Shad pulls out his car phone and calls his date. Hello? Shad is a little hesitant. Hey, Amara. This is Shad. I think I made it to your spot. Okay, I think I see the headlights from your car. See you soon. Okay, uh, see you soon. Shad sounded nervous. 
outside Amara's house tonight. Shad cautiously gets out of the car and looks around. Shad gets an eerie vibe from the deafening silence in wooded areas. He notices the older house surrounded by a barbed wire fence. Someone walks out of the house with a fur coat, but their face is hidden. Shad walks over to the fence and notices there's a chain on the fence. He looks very uncomfortable as the unseen Amara begins to unlock the chain from around the fence. Um, hello? Shad nervously gets out. Amara turns toward the house as Shad follows behind her. Amara's house. Night. Amara turns while unzipping her coat, revealing her beauty. Shad's jaw almost hits the floor by her allure. Her skin shines and almost looks delectable like chocolate candy. Her body arouses with a mixture of structure and softness. Her curves wake in every man's libido, if not he envies her. She's the finest woman ever. Shad cleared his throat. Wow, you look amazing. Amara's feminine energy fills the room as the rest of her coat falls to the floor. Amara's smile lights up the room as her small, beautiful eyes honor Shad's completement. Thank you. Amara responds. Shad notices a light coming from his left side that distracts him. The light comes from the TV playing in the next room. In front of the television sits a young girl in her mid to late teens playing her PlayStation. Shad looks over at the younger sister and waves. Oh, hello. The younger sister looks at Shad. Don't you ever speak to my sister again? Amara aggressively says to Shad. The energy shifted. Shad is in shock by Amara's reaction and look of disdain. The sister turns back to her game. Wait, what do you mean? You want me to be rude and not speak to her? Shad uncomfortably states. Amara thinks about Shad's question. The mood changes back to a more pleasant vibe. I'm sorry, you're right. I'm just overprotective of her. Amara responds. Shad lets out a sigh. I get it. I get it. I meant no harm, though. Shad says. Amara walks up to Shad and hooks his arm. Hey, let's go to my room so we can get comfortable. Again, I didn't mean to spaz like that. Amara explains. Shad smiles as Amara escorts him to her room. Amara's room. Night. Amara's room has an artistic vibe with a series of trophies to show her athleticism. Amara sits on her bed as Shad sits on her floor. Hey you, come sit on the bed with me. I won't bite. Amara flirts. Of course, I was just giving you your space. Shad replies, I see you have a tattoo of Daddy Loves Me. You must be a daddy's girl. Shad asks. Amara looks off in the distance before bringing her attention back to Shad. She smiles. Of course, I love him to death. Amara responds. I know he would have a fit letting you go at your wedding. Shad says. Amara looked as if she was getting ready to say something. So not to get all serious, but do you plan on getting married? Shad asks. Of course. Amara says enthusiastically. Shad smirks. Are you sure? Shad playfully asks. Amara smiles back. Of course, I'm sure. Listen, I know it's mad early, but do you know what your wedding colors would be? Shad inquisits. Amara thinks about the question. My dress would be blue with purple, white, and red sprinkles. Amara happily responds. Shad looks confused. So would it be like a wedding in the Caribbean or on a beach? No, my wedding will be in a church. Amara barks. Shad tries to laugh off the tension. Okay, I was just wondering because a beach wedding would be beautiful. Shad replies. No, that's not what I want. Amara sternly answers. Okay, all right. Shad replies. Shad looks around Amara's room and notices a lot of artwork and paintings on her wall. I see you have mad art pieces. I take it you're a fan of art? Shad changes the subject. Amara's face lights up. I am also a student. Wait right here. Amara excitingly says. Amara happily hops off of the bed and leaves the room. Shad gets up and begins to talk to himself by looking into the mirror. Come on. Stop pissing her off. Stay the course. I'm on board in the bet. 
Cisco can keep the title of Cutter. You want to wipe her up. Word. Amara rushes back into the room holding a large art album. She flops on the bed with joy and she opens the album. Amara chuckles. What are you doing? Amara asks. She pats the bed for Shad to sit down. Shad sits back on her bed. Amara pushes the album over to Shad for him to look at. He goes through the pages amazed at her artwork. Wow, you drew all of these? Amazing. Nice. Amara smiles with pride as she gloats. Yeah, I did most of these drawings from Art Corner at Disney Springs when I worked there. It was okay. It wasn't so boring when I put accents on the customer's imperfections. Shad continues to turn the pages of the album. You mean like this one? Shad asks. Shad shows Amara a caricature of her client where she makes fun of him through her drawings. Amara nods with approval. Yep. I was told by my manager to calm down on accenting my client's human flaws. Not everyone finds it too humorous. Shad laughs as he continues to cycle through Amara's drawing. True. These are amazing. Shad slides his hand in the last few pages of the back of her album. Shad looks caught off guard. He sees a picture of an elderly couple with their throat slit holding hands on a rocking bench. I'm going for my bachelor's in graphic design. Amara continues to speak. Shad turns the page with a look of confusion, and then it later turns into sheer horror. Shad's eyes bulge while looking at a drawing of his friend Sisko with a hatchet in his head. Shad can barely hear Amara talking in the background. He slams the album shut and Amara is caught off guard. Shad begins to stretch and yawn. <sighs> Listen, Bar, I had a wonderful time, but I have class in the morning. Is it possible I can take you out for lunch tomorrow afternoon? Shad asks. Shad tries his best to look charming. Amara studies Shad's face with a blank stare. She eventually smiles at Shad. Sure, hold on a sec. I made food for us to eat here, but I can prepare a to-go plate for you. Wow, you're so kind. I'll be happy to take a plate home. Thank you so much. Amara gets up off of the bed. Be back in a sec. Amara says before leaving the room. Shad smiles. Amara walks down the long hallway and turns at the end of the hall. Shad instantly zeroes in on the multiple locks and chains on the front door. He begins to look around the room and notices her trophies. He looks up at the window and opens the blinds. The windows are boarded inside with extra secured metal bars on the outside. Fuck! Shad says with fear. A chainsaw roars in the background, startling Shad. Amara stands behind Shad holding a small chainsaw alongside her younger sister handling a makeshift weed eater attached to a sponge at the end. Her sister turns the makeshift weed eater on and electric sparks come out of the sponge. Shad throws his hands in the air. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? I thought we were rocking out. Is this some type of joke? Shad shouts out. A joke? No, you are the joke. Men, men like you. Amara lashes out. Shad looks at the girls confused. You take advantage and use women. Wait. How did I take advantage of- This is why I have to protect my sister from men like you. Shad looks over at Amara's sister to plead with her. I don't know you. I'm sorry for whatever happened. Don't talk to her. Amara screams at Shad. Amara steps toward Shad. Shad grabs a trophy and throws it at Amara. A digging sound is heard in the background. Amara's backyard. Later. Two girls are digging into a large hole with shovels. We later see it's Amara and her sister. Shad's body is wrapped in bloody sheets. Amara has a large gash on the side of her forehead. Amara's sister stops digging and looks over at Amara. Why didn't you duck? Tracy asks. Amara stops digging and looks over at her sister with tired and frustrated eyes. Shut up. Amara snaps back. They both go back to digging the grave. <laughs>